Am I live? Yep, you're I good. hope I'm live. You're Hi, everyone. So, yeah, kind of changing things up a little bit. I'm doing a live video this time as opposed to a YouTube video. But, hey, don't worry, though. If you do miss this, I am going to upload this to my YouTube channel later. So, don't worry if you're not going to be missing anything. You're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. All right? Fantastic. I'm speaking really fast now because I've never done this before. So, if you can't understand me, I'm sorry. Anyways... So today, I actually have a lovely assistant helping me today. Meet my wonderful friend, Morgan, if you want to. Do I want to like do it? Or you do it? Oh, but yeah, I can. Oh, you can? Oh, awesome. I'm, there's people watching, I'm, it says. There, oh, there's okay. people watching us right now? Wow, this is amazing. I've never done Facebook it's, Live before. This is pretty mind I didn't know people were supposed to watch. Well, if that's the it's, point of going live. I mean, if that's how it's oh, going to work. Is it? Is okay. it? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so down to the brass tacks. So today I'm going to be making you something that's very, very special, dear to my heart, because it combines two of my favorite things in the world, pasta and eggs. That's predominantly everything that I've been posting on my YouTube channels. Today I thought I'd show you one of my favorite dishes to make that combines both of them together, pasta carbonara. In other words, bacon and egg pasta. But not bacon and egg pasta. I'll get to that in a moment. So the story... Oh, pasta carbonara, which is one of my favorite pastas to make in the world, is pretty much this. It's commonly referred to as the coal miner's pasta. And the story goes that back when, you know, I don't know what time period it was when coal miners were coal mining, but there was one coal miner who had a wife, and she figured, too, since the coal miners are working really hard days all the time, they figured they needed something really hearty to fill up their bellies and everything to make sure that they got the food to fill them up, give them that energy, ready to go. So she decided one day, because she realized she, all she had on her countertop was guanciale, which comes from the pork cheek. She had some Parmesan cheese, she had a few eggs and some pasta, decided to make a dish out of that, combining the eggs and the pasta water, making a cream sauce out of that, and serving it to the coal miners, and just making sure that it fills up their stomachs and everything, and making sure you know they're good to go. And then the reason it's called carbonara is because the carbo comes from the carbon, which normally comes on their faces. And so one of the key ingredients to this is fresh black pepper, which kind of helps you resemble that, you know, thing. Isn't that interesting, Morgan? It's very interesting. I know. This is, the, this is the thing I love about Buffett. I love to hear these stories. And the, and the wonderful thing about these stories is that none of them are actually true a lot of time. But it's fun to kind of spread that out, make a multiple choice and everything, you know what I mean? So that's just one of my personal ones. If you want to find your own interpretation, find out whatever you want to. It's your life. Do whatever you want. Anyway, let's get down to it. So, pasta carbonara. What will you need for this? Of course, you are going to be needing some lovely pasture-raised eggs. It really is good to have good eggs, too. If you can't find good eggs, then find someone that has good eggs. But yeah, these ones are my favorite ones. And then, of course, you're going to need some lovely, lovely pancetta. Now, some people have always asked me a lot of the time, like, what is pancetta? Pancetta is nothing more than bacon. The only difference is that it's not smoked. It's only cured. So if you're unable to find pancetta, you can use bacon as a substitute if you want to. And if you want to find pancetta, too, like I did, I just go up to my deli. I ask them to grind it fresh for me or, you know, slice it fresh. I mean, not grind. Grind is for grind meats. I'm looking for sliced things. And you want to get it about maybe at least... About a quarter inch thick, too, because, again, this is a bit of an indulgent dish, too, so it's something like that. And, again, if you can't find pancetta, don't sweat it. Just use bacon. Whatever you have on you, you're going to be fine. And another key ingredient, of course, is a little bit of good Parmesan cheese and some more Parmesan cheese and some Pecorino Romano. Now, the reason I like to use this combination of Pecorino and Parmesan is because Parmesan, it is salty, but at the same time, it adds this kind of subtle sweetness to it, while Pecorino, because it's sheep's milk, so it's a little gamier and sharper, but adds a nice saltiness. I just think blending those two together adds a really nice punginess to it. And then, of course, we're also gonna be needing a little bit of butter, help gild the lily a little bit, make sure that your sauce is gonna be nice and lovely. And then, of course, we're gonna use my favorite long pasta, which is Bucatini. Now, why do I love Bucatini so much? It's a really hollow spaghetti, except it has a tiny, you can't really see it probably too well, but it has a tiny, tiny little hole inside of it, so it's able to trap onto more sauce. And it's actually meant for pasta sauces like that. Some things are a little more heartier. You can use it for like ragu sauces or something like that. But I just like it because I love Bucatini pasta. So, first thing we gotta do, we got a nice big pot of water here. I'm gonna try to bring that up to a boil. I'm gonna, of course, gonna heavenly season this with a bit of salt. Now, some people still ask me all the time, is heavenly, heavy, 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 heavenly? Well, it is going to be heavenly. I mean, what's not going to like about this pasta? But anyway, it is heavily seasoned for two things. 
One, yes, it does bring your water up to a boil faster for some scientific reason. I'm not a scientist, I'm a cook. But it also seasons your pasta very well too. Plus we're gonna be needing all of this starchy pasta water to help out with our sauce too, to kind of loosen it up, get it nice and viscous too. So those are the main reasons why. A lot of people still ask me that, that's the reason why. So go ahead, get that going, and we're gonna bring that back to a boil. But in the meantime, let's prep the pancetta. So, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna move all this out of the way. So, with the pancetta, all you're gonna do simply, you're gonna keep it up in these nice little stacks like so, and then with your knife, slice down, about, yay, thicker sure so. You know, just kind of eyeball it. It's all up to you with the textures and everything. This is about half a pound of pancetta, by the way, too, if in case you're wondering about measurements. I will be posting that later in the video, what all you will need for this. So, I'm gonna cut them up into nice little cubes like so. And you don't have to worry if it's all gonna get stuck together like this, because this is all gonna render out just like bacon wood, so it's all gonna separate later. So don't worry if it gets stuck like that. Steven, you're getting lots of comments on this video already. I am already? Good lord. Someone said that you were delightful. Oh, whoever said that, you are so nice. Thank you very much. Why am I speaking like this now? I don't know. Sometimes I buzz in a random accent and it just happens. Kind of sounds like Linda. Linda Belcher. Oh, I love it. Break out with Coco Chanel. <laughs> I mean, Linda and I do really have a lot in common. We both love theater. We both love wine. And we both love food. Linda's my spirit animal, pretty much. Ugh. Because everyone knows I have an unhealthy obsession with Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I think the audience should know that you are in fact wearing a um, Tina Daria Nick shirt. Oh, I know. Should, should I show them that? I think you should. I think I should. Okay, hang on. I'm going to wash my hand really quick. I see. It's probably really important with cooking, right? It really is. And people don't believe me, but it's like, no, I wash my hands. I understand sanitation is important. I don't want to get anybody else sick. Good Lord. Ugh, where's the towel? Where's the towel? Um, here's one. Is it? Oh, there's the towel. Got a little excited there. Okay. Wash that off. Did you just, just look at that. Isn't that That's wonderful? Six uh, Sad Tina. I know, Six Sad Tina. Mm -hmm. uh, a combination of two of my favorite TV characters and two of my favorite TV shows ever. Ah! Yeah, I got that orange tie on, trying to look nice and... They commented that you were a fantastic Tina. Oh, thank you. I tried really hard at it. <laughs> that probably wasn't my best, Tina. But no one's probably going to care. You've probably been but out of practice for a little bit. I have practiced a little bit. You could say I just have an unhealthy obsession with her. <laughs> we just kind of relate in so many ways. Especially our love of coffee. Because it's an acquired taste. Coffee and acquired. butts? Yeah, coffee, coffee and butts. Because who doesn't like to turn down for butt? I know I don't. Oh, <laughs> a lot of people don't, but that's okay. <laughs> Everyone has their vices. It's anyway, cool. so this yeah. is the pancetta. Hi, Mama. <laughs> I won't put her on video. No, she's not. Gonna, don't worry, or she's not going to be. On I don't think she'd like that. I love a Mama though. I'm a Mama's boy. Okay, so got that over there. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands again. All right. Hi, Daddy. Hi. <laughs> Than the parents. <laughs> so anyways, so that's the pancetta part. So now the next thing we're going to be showing you is the actual sauce part of it. So for this again, you're going to be using, this is the combination I like to use. A lot of people have different variations on how many eggs to add to pasta, but the ra ratio that I really like is four egg yolks and one whole egg. Why it works, it just worked for me. I've stuck with it ever since. So, yeah. All right. So, this is what you do. You're gonna take your egg. This will be the whole egg yolk. Put it right there. Eh. Back in here. Oh, okay. Now this is what I meant too when I meant pasteurized. Look at the color of that yolk. You know what that color means? That means that you had a very happy chicken. Pasteurized eggs, seriously, they do make a difference too rather than, you know, sad eggs. What does a sad egg look like? You don't want to know. Okay. I've been on You've checking. You've probably all seen one, right? Yeah. 
And let's see, now we're going to separate some of the egg yolks. So like so. Now some people like to do it in the shell. I personally just like to use my fingers. I just feel like you're a little more gentler, a little bit more in control when you're using your hand. But you know, if you want to use a shell, it's up to you. This is just my method of doing it. Drop that in. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just mesmerized by these collars. By the way, I'm not cracking it with one hand for showing off reasons. I just crack a lot of eggs a lot, so you just kind of get used to it. I never do my things to show off. Show offs are for show offy people. I just do it because, again, it's just imprinted in my head to do it with one hand, so. <laughs> Is that how you learned it in school? <laughs> no. Should we say what we're making again? Because somebody commented, what are we making? Okay, yeah. As I said earlier in the video, too, I'm making pasta carbonara. Again, it's just pretty much bacon and egg pasta, but it's not going to be like scrambled eggs or anything like that. It's just going to be a simple pasta dish where the eggs are going to act as a cream sauce, so to speak. So now we're going to move this bowl out and again, wash my hands. I am a fan of friendliness in the kitchen cause it is important because no one wants to die just yet. A little morbid right there, but you know. But very factual. Yeah, very, fa very factual. I mean, everyone's, you know, honestly, it's kind of a big deal. I want people to be safe. So then the next thing we're going to do with our lovely eggs, we are going to grate. Some cheese inside. Here's the pecorino romano. You really want to use the freshly grated stuff too. Don't be buying that powder stuff. Pay a couple of extra bucks for the good stuff. Because okay? it really does make a difference flavor wise too. And plus, this was only like $3, so. Can you buy it at any regular grocery store? Or you buy I, yeah, you can get it at a grocery store. You just gotta look at like the good cheese sections that just look really hard for them and everything. But I mean, not mm -hmm. too hard, not just to the point where it's gonna be complicated where you're gonna be traveling all over the world to find it. No, just go to your grocery store and look around your cheese sections and see if they have it. So, yeah. Now we're just gonna freshly grate this in. Oh, maybe a couple of tablespoons or so in there. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh. Again, pecorino. Very sharp, very gamey, but very delicious. Oh, love it. There we go. So how, is it, how is it that you make raw eggs and cheese look so good? It's well, because food is good. I mean, good food. Yeah, good food. I mean, you want food to look good, so you know, yeah. You gotta get a little personal with your food too. Take pride in it and everything. Because if you don't take pride in your food, then your food is gonna treat you the same way you treated it. I'm just saying. I'm not I'm trying to. Kind of like a wife. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't have. I probably shouldn't have said that. No, no. People deserve to be treated with respect. It's very true. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, maybe it looks like a tablespoon or so. Again, but again, you gotta remember too, there is a difference between how you weigh cheese rather than how you measure it too. So like, say that a recipe calls for two ounces of cheese, you're gonna say, oh, that's probably just like, you know, like a quarter cup, no. It's gonna make a difference in weight too, so it's gonna look like almost a cup, so. But it's gonna be really light too, so you just gotta remember your little ratios too, and just remember, because we are freshly grating it, it is gonna be really light, so. It looks like a lot, but who's gonna complain about a lot of cheese? I don't know, anyway. So we got that, and now we're gonna add a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. Be generous with the pepper in this dish too, because again, that black pepper, it does have a nice contrast, with that salty pancetta and you know the salty cheeses and everything. And again, just represents the carbon on the coal miner's faces. Again, I love what things add to the story. Now I am gonna go ahead and add just a little, little, little bit of salt. I don't wanna add too much because again, we already got a lot of salt from the pasta water and a lot of salt from the pancetta and a lot of salt from the cheese. So just that little bit would just kinda help, just can bring out those flavors just a little bit when you don't need too much. So just, so will we be reusing the water 
Oh, yes, we will be using it. Is that a spoiler? Sorry. No, no, it's not a spoiler. I mean, it's going to be essential <laughs> later on anyways. But yes, we are going to be using that water soon. Okay. And now I need to get myself a little fork here. And I'm just giving one more right here. By the way, the um, person on the other end of this um, doesn't cook. So <laughs> I ask dumb questions. Sorry. <laughs> There's no such thing as dumb questions. I cook pancakes. I'm pretty good at pancakes. There's nothing wrong with pancakes. Pancakes are delicious. Kinda, I'm just going to beat these up. Next, Somebody um, wrote Salt Bay. <laughs> I did, it was Salt Bay. <laughs> so now we're just going to mix it up, mix it up. Oh yeah. Now it's not going to look like something extravagant just yet, but wait till you cook. Wait, wait till you cook it with the pasta. It's going to be lovely. So there we go. So, we got our pancetta prepped. We got our eggs separated. We got them mixed up with the cheeses. Now we're just waiting for that pasta to come to the boil. Come to the boil? I don't know. Come to a boil? I mean, a boil, whatever you want to call it. I think everybody at home kind of got their message. I think they got the idea, yeah. you know. So there we go. Makes it looking lovely. Oh yeah. It's <sighs> actually weird if I smelled. No! I just smelled it. Oh, it smells really good. Oh, it's gonna be lovely. You guys are missing so, out. So let's Not being here. Okay. All right, it's getting there. Not quite there just yet. So, wait a moment. Then, of course, to be cooking all of this too and cooking it, I'm going to be using my favorite cast iron pan, Large Marge. And she's been my baby for the last five-ish years or so, I'd say. Oh, oh. wow. Mm -hmm. Starting to get a new seasoning on her again. I figure we're using this tonight. Hope to get a little more of those flavors on there. <laughs> I'll probably do a video later too on how to season your cast iron properly too, because I'm still learning. I just learned a new trick too to keep it, you know, seasoned well, so nothing's going to be sticking to it, and make sure you're getting even cooking all the way. It's a lot of fun. I'll explain that later in a future video. Anyway, okay. not yet. A little impatient sometimes when I'm waiting for the pasta water to come to a boil. Anyway, so what should? Do you have any other questions too while we're doing this? By the way, Morgan. I don't know, I'm afraid to ask. I don't want to ask anything. Well, hmm. Okay, so you're talking about this Bucatini. Bucatini, so, yes. Bucatini. Mm -hmm. So, can you also just buy this at any store? I yes, they're actually becoming a little bit more available, like as of recently, too. I'm starting to see them more at any of your local grocery stores, because this is something I, I used to travel to Kansas City just to find it, too, because I, I didn't realize it was like that rare of a pasta, but now it's starting to become the new big thing, so... Bucatini is pretty much available anywhere, so if you can get your hands on it, it's really worth it, too. Again, it's just pretty much nothing more than just a little thicker spaghetti. It has that nice little hole inside of it, so it traps onto more sauces. A lot of people lose it for bolognese or ragus or another good pasta, a matrachana, which is another similar dish that has pancetta or bacon inside of it, except you use tomatoes in that one set of eggs. But that's another story. Steven, I think next time, if you ever make spaghetti puttanesca, you should tell that story. Oh, but yes. I did. It's on my YouTube video. You did? Yeah. Have you not watched my YouTube video? I mean, videos? yeah, I have, but you make so many things all the time. Like, <laughs> no, I know, I know. I like that story. I know, it's, it's a good story. It's probably my favorite story of the spaghetti mm -hmm. stories that you tell. Should I you say You have it? a lot of spaghetti stories. All right. All right. Should I well, no, 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 you don't have to. I don't have to? Okay. I don't want to repeat anything. All right, no, it's no. okay. <laughs> In case anybody is wondering, Putinesca is pasta of the prostitutes. And the story of pasta Putinesca... Well, first of all, has anybody seen the, seri the series, A Series of Unfortunate Events on Netflix yet? Um... As the one person that's in here that can reply, I have not seen it. Okay, it's just I remember too, I keep forgetting too, like in the books too, that they made uh, Putinesca for Count Olaf, and really the dish is just tomatoes, anchovies, olives, and capers, and they made a little joke like, I wonder what that means. It's because it comes from pasta of the prostitutes, because the story is somewhere in southern Italy, there was an Italian chef in the, around the 1950s who ran an Italian restaurant. And there just happened to be a lot of prostitutes around the area he had his restaurant because they felt that that was the best place for their business. And then there was one night where the chef, you know, he was closing up shop, and then some of the prostitutes came into his restaurant, and they were exhausted. They were asking him, do they have any food left over for us to eat? All they had was a few tomatoes, some capers, some olives, and anchovies. Decided to make a sauce out of that. They loved it so much that he put it on the menu, and it became a staple ever since. And again, that's the story I know. Maybe there's another one. I don't know. But anyway, that's Putinesca. And I'm starting to already sweet tea. Our pasta is up, or our water is up to a nice rapid boil. It is important that your water is rapidly boiling, so that way you're able to release more of the starches out of the pasta and that it ensures that it cooks evenly. 
Now we're gonna take our lovely bucatini pasta. And I'll drop it in. Just wait. Make sure that those bottoms are softened up. And just, I thought I'd make it look cool, but I didn't. I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah. So now, I'm gonna move this around slowly. And make sure that you are moving it slowly because you don't want to break any of these strands. You want to make sure those strands are nice and long. I can remember the other side. This is about a pound of pasta, by the way, too. I'm just moving it around. Nice and soft. And you want to wait for your water to come back to a boil. And we're going to be cooking this al dente. Is al dente important? Yes. Because al dente pretty much means undercooking something. Like it's gonna be a cooked pasta, but you're still gonna have a little bit of chew to it. But at the same time, it says we're gonna be pulling it out. It's, and, no, and normally on the package it says to cook it for this amount of time. Do that at least a minute less than the package instructions because you're gonna be finishing your pasta in with the sauce that you're gonna be making with it. And then it's gonna be cooked perfectly all the way through then. Mm. So now we got our pasta in. And it is important too that you do stir this occasionally too. That way your pasta is not gonna to stick together and on top of that, it also ensures that you're releasing more of those starches that you want out of the pasta. So, I'm just gonna be doing that. Jennifer Whitworth says, I've had overcooked pasta, it sucks. It really does, doesn't it? Because you know what overcooked pasta tastes like? Hatred and sadness. <gasps> we don't want hatred and sadness in our dishes, do we? Because all you're gonna taste is hatred and sadness. Oh my gosh. Nobody wants that. I don't think I've ever tasted those, and I don't want to mm. today. It's not a pleasant thing. <laughs> it really isn't a pleasant thing at all. All right, so now we're going to wait for that pasta to come to a boil. In the meantime, let's get our pan ready for the manjita. So we're going to start on a nice, maybe medium, medium low heat, because we want the pancetta to be cooked, but we don't want it to be crispy, per se. We're looking to release those flavors, but we still, at the same time, want it to be kind of a nice, delicate, Pancetta-y pancetta, if you know what I mean. And we're also gonna grab, yeah, a little bit of butter. Stephen, are you opening to answering questions from viewers? Oh yeah! Okay, um, Amy Flood Boyles wants to know, why after boiling pasta is there a thin layer of something around the pot? I think those are the starches coming out of the uh, coming out of the pasta, actually. Those little thin layers that you see, you notice how to, like, take a look here, like, how it's getting a little cloudy like that. That's again the starch that's coming out of the pasta actually. But the starch is what you actually want. And again, so if you're seeing some stuff that's left over in your pan, that's just the starches from the pasta and the pasta water. That is a good question to ask though. I'm glad people are asking questions. So again, stir it around. Water is already starting to get cloudied up again. That's a good sign. This is probably gonna take maybe nine-ish minutes to cook, but that gives you enough time for when your pasta's done, your sauce is gonna be ready. So now we got a lovely butter melting away. Oh yeah. I like how you say butter. I know, butter. I love the butter. <laughs> Makes you sound British, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a nice little bit of olive oil. Redistribute those flavors. Is there a specific type of olive oil you recommend? It all depends, really. I mean, all olive oils are going to be different. I really have no favorite one. Just don't buy the cheap stuff. Because that cheap stuff is like this factory processed sad thing. So no great value olive oil? <laughs> For me personally, no. But if that's what you can afford, then yeah, use great value. I don't, I don't care. It's your life. We don't want our food tasting like hatred and sadness. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm making these videos, so I can tell, teach you guys not to do that, okay? Fantastic. Zachary Walker asks, so when's Food Network picking you up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are they available? I don't know. I think they could get rid of a few of their shows and move you in. Yeah, I know. What's that one where they, um, they get like chain, or they have like obstacles, and they still have to cook despite those obstacles? Oh, uh... Uh, Cutthroat Kitchen. They could do without that show. Yeah. They could do without any competitive cooking show in general, I to be completely honest. Because the thing about me personally, I'm not a competitive cooker. I believe in cooking for people to make them happy. I don't believe in cooking as a competition. I'm not I'm not constantly one that's trying to think, oh, I'm better than somebody else because I did this. I'm like, no. A good cook is one that is humble enough to expand their horizons and open their minds just a little bit 
Because that way we can all explore together. Not think, oh, I'm better than you, oh, I'm better than you. No, we're exploring together. Because that's what food does. It brings people together, not against each other. It brings them together. We want to be together, you know? Okay. I thought like that'd be a nice quote for a meme, except we probably have to shorten it a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Well, it was a long I mean, quote. Just a little bit. Well, a lot we'll of quotes, really small print. Well, a lot of quotes are long. That's true. All right. So now our pan is getting nice and heated up. It's still a little bit cold, but at the same time, because we're cooking it at kind of a lower temperature, that just means a lot of the fat from the pancetta is going to be rendered out a little bit more, and we want that too. We're just going to add in the lovely pancetta. Oh, yeah. Oh, Even the pasta water smells good. I know. Okay. And again, because they heavily seasoned it with salt too, it's just going to bring a better flavor out of it. I'm just going to zoom in on the pancetta so everyone oh, can for see it. it. Yes, get some action shots in there. Oh, it looks really good. The, food should, the video should be more about the food more than it is the person cooking it, but you know, that's just me. I just like to make it fun. Oh yeah. And move it around. Oh yeah. Oh. Right as that pancetta hits the pan too. That's, <laughs> that is a wonderful thing. Oh yeah, baby. Oh. And again. If you can't find pancetta, bacon works just as well, too. I just like pancetta because I like to keep it kind of traditional. Because, again, originally, people would use, again, what they call guanciale, which comes from the cheek of the pig. And how that works, I don't know. That's something I'm still exploring myself, too. But I like to use pancetta because it's close enough. And I like... So, Zachary Walker has a question. Yes! He says, or asks, So, are your eggs to add texture to the pasta like authentic ramen is made? In a sense, yeah, because again, the eggs are going to act as a cream sauce, so to speak, too, without any, without the addition of cream to it. It's not like we're going to be scrambling the eggs inside of it, too. Like again, like, the, you're, you'll see when we make the video, too. Like, it just adds this nice richness to it. It's kind of like, with, like, cacio pepe, it's like adult mac and cheese, pretty much. Because, again, but those eggs are just going to elevate it up to a different level, too. Oh, yeah. You already start to see. Starting to go there. What do you say we test one of these pasta strands here? Drum roll, please. That's almost there. Or it just needs a minute more. But that is almost there. Oh, yeah, baby. You already start to see some of that lovely fat coming out of the pancetta. Oh, the smell. I'm gonna turn it up just a little No, bit. I wish everyone could smell this. I know. It smells so good. Especially, we're in 2017. Why don't we have smell vision yet? That would be very cool. It would be. You should um, patent that. Thanks a lot, Jetsons, for building up our expectations for the future. No offense, I actually like the Jetsons. I we still have time, I think, before. I mean, the Jetsons are still in the future. Yeah, that's true. We still have time. It's just that show was based in 2001, is the other weird thing. Oh, well, then never mind. We don't have time. So yeah. connect with the Jetsons is the yeah, past. Who knows? We definitely didn't um, advance as much as they expected us to. No, I know. Disappointment. By the way, these really are questions I ask myself when I'm cooking a lot of the time, too. <laughs> Sometimes you need someone to talk to. And don't be ashamed to talk to yourself. Sometimes you need an expert's opinion. <laughs> I talk to myself all the time, but I am no expert. Yeah, sometimes I, I need even to say, crap, why am I burning your face? I know. <laughs> sometimes you debate yourself, too. As yourself, well, why am I doing this this way? Maybe we could do this way. Maybe it could be that way. Again, you're just expanding your horizons just a little bit more. Um, please don't, please don't tell me I'm going to say this wrong, but Dersha says hi. Hi, Deja! Deja, sorry. Oh, yeah, but she, <laughs> I know what she's talking about, Dersha. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, Dersha. That was a fun night. <laughs> Not gonna get into that story though. <laughs> ah, but anyway. All right, so you can see here, we're getting a lot of nice smoothness, richness out of the pancetta without it getting too crispy though. Or we're not looking to crisp it up. We're so just you don't want it being it. like bacon? No, not really, no. Okay. You could get it at that stage. I just feel like you're going to lose a lot of the flavor if you do that. Because we're still looking for that little bit of that flavor in it, too. Okay. It's a good question to ask, though. Because there have been times when I have overdone bacon before. And I just felt like it didn't have that good of flavor inside of it. But yeah. That is lovely. And again, save that water. Do not throw... Oh. Don't throw up. A little accent is happening, a little spills happening. That's okay, we're in the kitchen. <laughs> Things like that happen. But again, 
You always want to save your water because it does help your sauce and takes it up to a different level. A lot of people don't realize that, but it works. Oh yeah. Oh, just look at that. Should I go back and show the eggs for anyone who? Oh yeah. Yeah. So earlier um, we mixed eggs and parmesan and mm -hmm. pecorino with yep. cheese. Mm -hmm. A little bit of black pepper. And then some black pepper, which we decided you can be as generous as you want to yep. pepper. And we mix that all together, and that's going to be a part of the cream sauce. It is. Okay. Good question to ask, though. All right, so now about this point here, I think we are ready to get the pasta and the pancetta ready to go. We're already starting to see we got all that nice fat out of there. We want that, though, because that's going to be the flavor. It's going to help your pasta also emulsify into a sauce better. So we can turn the pasta off. So just because, you know, I'm used to pulling it out, I don't really use a strainer that much, but if you need to use a strainer, go for it. Just make sure that you're saving a little bit of that water. But because I've done pasta plenty of time, you want the bravio? Oh yeah. Just gonna add it right into the pan. Just like so. Right out. Oh baby. Me too. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Again, al dente. Because this is going to finish off later in the sauce. As you're going to see right now. There we go. Okay. We got all that. I like to make sure. You are kidding. You are probably getting there. Oh yeah. Now you're just going to stir it around, stir it around. Now at this point, we're just trying to make sure that all of our pasta is coated in all of that lovely pancetta fat. Yes, it's fat. Don't deny it. I said it was going to be good. Yeah, it's a good kind of fat. I said it was going to be good, not good for you. <laughs> good for your soul. That's the most important thing. It is. And again, you can already start to see how lovely it's getting. Ah! Oh, my last right. one. Get back in there. Don't worry, it didn't fall on the ground. It's okay. No, I'm witness. It didn't mm -hmm. fall on the ground. Yep. So you're it around slowly, slowly. Oh, yeah, baby. And we're going to take our ladle and a touch of the pasta water. Inside. And again, when you're shaking it and stirring it constantly like that, you have a better chance of creating this nice viscous sauce. Because again, you're just agitating those starches, but with the fat too, it kind of makes it creamy and velvety. And we want that. We want creamy and velvety in pasta. Part of the reason we eat pasta. <laughs> because it's clinged on to something velvety and creamy. I'm not a fan of thin sauce pasta. Mm -mm. Some people like it thin, some people like it thick. I'm kind of a kind of an in-between guy. Somewhere right in the middle, you know? But again, it's your pasta. You do with it as you please. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, you can see how lovely it is. Oh. And at this point, we are going to add a little bit more pasta water. And we're also going to turn the heat right off. You want to put in your eggs off the heat because if you do it too much on the heat, you will scramble your eggs. So by doing it off the heat, you have a better chance of not doing that. So now we're just going to grab all of our lovely egg mixture, put it in. Oh, baby. It's so good. I love pasta. Pasta's amazing. I guess I didn't whisper it. So now, grab it again. Move it around. Making sure everything is coated in that lovely egg. Oh. Yeah, and you can already start to see a little bit of change in the color. Oh, my goodness. I can really smell the uh, pancetta now. I know, right? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, baby. I think that's the most overwhelming of the mm -hmm. smells going on. I'm already getting that pecorino cheese on top of that, too. And again, because we're moving it around, stirring it constantly, you have a less chance of creating a better viscous sauce, and you're not scrambling your eggs. It's all just putting it really nicely. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. You can already start to see, again, a good change in how creamy it is without the addition of cream. Again, because we use that starchy pasta water, along with everything else in this pan, it's just gonna make it nice and lovely. Again, you're gonna see too, when it starts getting too thick like that again, you thin it out, 
or pasta water. So you can never really mess it up. No, not really at all. And of course, to gild the lily again, just a little bit more, because this thing is a little bit of an indulgence. And by a little, he means like Paula Dina, yeah. Paula Dean size. Don't compare me to Paula <laughs> Dean ever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, well, we are going to add some butter to this, too. And again, that butter is just going to add another element of richness to it. Makes it nice, lovely. Oh, yeah, baby. Get excited about my pastas. And you can see, too, you're not getting too many clumps of cheese all over the place, too, either, because, again, it just melted really smoothly. The egg is not scrambled. Ugh. I just love this pasta. It's one of my favorites again. What would you say is your favorite pasta? This one? Honestly, this is why I like to say one of. Because any pasta you put in front of me, I'm probably going to eat it because pasta is pasta and pasta is delicious. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never, because the only, no, here's the thing. The only bad pasta is the one I didn't eat. Touche. Mm-hmm. Somebody asked, so this isn't a diet food? <laughs> Depends on what kind of diet you're on. If you're on like an all-carb, all-fat mm -hmm. diet, yep. then Yeah, I'm on, the, I'm on the pasta diet. I mean, I did graduate from a semi-based French culinary school, so just saying. We use a lot of butter, a lot of cream, a lot of cheese, a lot of pancetta. So you can see right there, it's almost done. You see. But again, no cream. We used the eggs, the parmesan and pecorino, the pancetta. Oh, I'm ready to get this in my belly. Just like that. Very simple, very delicious. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just look at that. Mmm, mmm. And we are going to go ahead, too. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add just more parmesan. Because you can never have too much cheese in your pasta. Anyone that tells you that, stop talking to them because you do not need that negativity in your life. <laughs> I mean, unless you're lactose intolerant, then you probably shouldn't be doing that because we care about your health and safety. But you know what? Who am I to say, though? It's your life. Do with that as you please. Facebook has just informed you that this is your most watched live video. Well, how about that? <laughs> Did I just say a how about that? I think I did. Say, oh my goodness. What is the internet doing? Kind of sounded like Walton Goggins. I love Walton Goggins. My dad's a fan of Walton Goggins. We're gonna have a little more black pepper too. And just give it a nice oh. stir. Oh my gosh. I know, right? It looks so good. We're gonna have a little more pasta water now. See, even Morgan's getting excited about this. I've been excited since before mm. I even got over here. Don't even. <laughs> oh. Don't you even. Don't you even. How about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh. I'm gonna get a little bit of that better. Superb. Oh. That's gonna be amazing. Tyler Montgomery says, I'm lactose intolerant, but this would be worth it. <laughs> well, Allie Montgomery, you're awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Mm -mm. So there is the carbonara. So now, at this point, I'm going to show you guys how I like to plate it up. Because, you know, this is not just the food you want to eat. You want to make it look presentable for yourself. Right, because it doesn't already mm -hmm. look good. Because, again, that's the thing about cooking, too, is that you're using all of your senses, too. You're using both your eyes. You're using your ears. You're using your taste. You're using your feel. You're using your heart. I don't know if that's a sense, but, you know, you're using it anyway. Is love a sense? I think love should be a sense. I don't think technically, but it should be. It should I be. Agree. Love touches all the senses. Oh, oh yeah, baby. All right. Now I'm going to grab myself my favorite pasta bowl. Let's plate this beauty up. This is how I like to do it. You're going to grab your tongs. Grab some of the pasta. Put it in with your ladle, twist it, twist it slowly, 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 like so, and then we're just gonna 
drop you carefully. Again, because you're using the tongs, you have a better chance of holding your grip onto it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh, it's one of my favorite things to do in the world is plating pasta. Oh, it looks so pretty. <laughs> Look at that. It's beautiful. Look at that little pancetta. Oh, yeah. It was a top. All right, baby. You ever seen that meme that uh, people post, or some saying where it's like, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels? Mm -hmm. That's totally why. Yep. They obviously have not eaten your pasta. Yep. There's no shame in skinny people, though. No, I didn't mean it like no, that. No, not like that, no. A little bit more pasta. People are people no matter what. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. totally. And people are beautiful. Okay. Well. Again, <laughs> normally I take a few Instagram photos, but again, this is live. So again, this is how you do carbonara. Very simple, very straightforward. But to make sure that you get the full effect, I gotta taste it. I mean, good. Because here's the thing that people don't realize too. Like, how do you know your food? How do I know it's good? How do I know it's good? Taste it. Taste your food. That's when you know it's good. You can't just say, oh, it's done. Like, no, no, taste your food. Get into it. Ugh. Uh. You're killing me right now. I know. Do this, do this. Don't worry, you're gonna get some. <laughs> there we go. You're in your belly. Mama pasta. Get a little pinch down there, though. Alright. Here's to you all. <laughs> I think he went into a coma. <laughs> gonna weep now. Do not need to turn the camera away for a second? No. <laughs> no, everything is uncensored over here because I want people to see my emotions right now. This, again. Takes a real man to cry over, yeah. his, over his food. Oh. Proud of you, again, Steve You get that creaminess indulgence from the eggs, that nice sharpness and sweetness from the Parmesan and Pecorino Romano, that saltiness from the pancetta. That black pepper gives you that nice little kick. Everything here is just. The thing is, though, it doesn't look that hard. You kind of made it look really simple. You just have to have the right kind of ingredients. Mm -hmm. And you just gotta be patient. It's just technique, mostly. Again, this is why I like to show people this is how food works and everything. You just gotta show that you love your dish so much that you were excited to make it. Ugh. But anyway, there is the bacon and egg pasta right there. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you all had a fun time. I want to thank Morgan again for helping me film this. Say hi again, Morgan. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, this is Dude with the Food saying happy cooking. If you didn't miss this, I am going to be uploading this to my YouTube channel later on. Well, thank you for joining me on this, whoever did see this. I wish you all happy cooking. I love you all. Peace and love to everyone around of you. Yeah.